right. The swim shop has closed, and so now I can go paint. All right, so uh, if you are visiting or come over to my channel from the swim shop channel, first of all, yo, what's up? I know it's dark, can't see me right now. Hold on. Yeah. Yo, what's up? Thank you for, uh, I guess, coming over and checking this out. But, uh, yeah, I am, <laughs> it's kind of weird. I usually don't do stuff like this, so uh, I've got to get back in the groove of this. But, yes, I am Seth Williams I'm from the Swim Shop 4x4, and this is my art channel. If you're new, welcome. Hello. We are down here now. Uh, this is After hour Shop stuff. Um, I have been working on this here skateboard for a giveaway for Power and Sound. So that'll be raffled off and uh, all that good stuff. So I got um, what y'all didn't see on this. So what you didn't see on this uh, and I didn't document. Um, I got my background black. I got a nice cool lace rose pattern. And I laid down, I can't remember what this color's called. Let's look at it. It is called Violet. Should have should have known that. That's pretty common. But yeah, anyway, as I was saying, uh, if you are new on here, thanks for coming over and checking things out. Um, yeah, I have been doing artwork for ever since I could hold a pencil. If you went back and checked out some of my older videos on here, thank y'all so much. Uh, and if you've watched my channel before and seen um, some of those old videos and stuff like that, I know it's been a while since I've posted. Um, so, I don't know, we've just been busy in the shop and I also do some editing, do all the editing and do all that kind of stuff for YouTube for the swim shop. So, it took a small break from artwork stuff uh, just to get in a routine of doing that kind of stuff. But... I'm going to slowly start integrating more artwork stuff into my schedule uh, as I can. So, But for those that don't know, I did get a bike that is was really hot and heavy there as soon as I got it. And as all other projects go, it started slowing back down and real life started taking back over. But uh, I'm saving up. I'm doing all I can. You definitely will see the bike on the channel. In fact, it's been so long since I posted on here uh, the last video I went and looked and I feel terrible. <laughs> the last video I posted, it was of me etching the glass on my van and my van was two wheel drive and it still had the old Grim Reaper riding a white horse mural on the side. And I was like, holy cow, dude, it's been so long since I did a video. And I finally, and that's a good thing with the shop and everything. I've learned so much from editing and how to make better quality videos, how to shoot higher quality uh, stuff. So now I feel bad going back and looking at some of those uh, other art videos and stuff and going, man, if I would just taken a little time and bumped up the resolution or done this, that, and the other. But is what it is. No better time to start than just to get back in it and keep going. So that's what, uh, that's what I'm doing here. So anyway, long story short, thanks for watching if you've returned and thanks for checking me out. Let's get on the skateboard. Let's do this thing. And, uh, yeah. All right. So, um, as usual, I have no game plan whatsoever as to what I'm doing. Uh, and yeah, I know the shop is absolutely, uh, in disarray. Usually I'd have like a nice towel laid out, uh, and all that good stuff and a clean work area and desk. But sometimes you got to work around your environment and right now my environment is 100 percent four by four vans which is cool i dig that uh, i drive one so why wouldn't i want to be around them all the time but uh it does kind of make it hard to come down here and work with some paint stuff but i will put up with it if that's what i got to do but anyway uh so i'm working with a nice messy desk and really, really cold, uh, cold conditions here, which I might tell you what, I'm going to, before I really get into this, I'm going to turn on the uh, space heater.
Okay. All right. I just turned off the space heater. I'm sitting here in this 45, 40 by 40 shop, and I just got it blowing directly on me in this like six by six corner I'm in. But all good, all warm, all ready to go. I got this uh, process blue and a Black Widow WBW1 Mac. Whatever that means, I don't know. I can't remember where I got these brushes or who gave them to me, but I, I love them. Black Widow scroll brushes are super cool with me, man. So, uh, like I said, no idea as to what I'm doing, what direction it's gonna go. I like flames, and being that this is for power and sound, it's gonna be a lot of hot rods, a lot of choppers and vans. And one thing that combines all those vehicles together in my book is freaking flames so that way if anybody wins it they can be like oh cool it's got flames flames are cool with everybody man so and this brush i'm using it's not too thin and it's not too thick i usually like go right in the middle every time i'm pinstriping so let's see let's do something kind of Almost like Japanese style. Wispy flames and stuff. That's why I like the scroll brushes. You just stand it right up on the tip. You don't have to really work with the body so much. Or even like the... Uh, like with the sword brush, I guess. I don't do much traditional pinstriping. Because I'm not really one to uh to go for symmetry when i'm doing stuff i mean i can but honestly it just takes practice and lots of time and i freaking hats off to anybody especially old <laughs> all the old school dudes and people man they uh you see somebody doing some traditional sword stuff man I'm just like, that is just beyond my understanding. Well, it's not beyond my understanding. It's just my, beyond my limit and skills as of right now. But, I mean, you can learn a lot from those dudes. When you're going with the flow and just going wherever your hand takes you, you just got to kind of play with the cards you're dealt, I guess. Sharpen that up a little bit. Cool. I always like to go back and just make uh, make the body of my flames as thin as possible, but make them look natural. Like, that was way too sharp right there, so putting that little curve in it just makes it look natural to me. So now, like, even here, like, I could leave that, but, man, I just, I like to see smoothness and roundness to them. So even just for me in my head, doing that little bit right there just to round that harsh edge out is fine. I got two lines touching here, too. That don't bother me either. That kind of is some... That's kind of like that 60s wild acid trip looking flames. Like here, I'm probably going to go way out, tuck in big swoop i got a lot of them pointing had these pointing out so i don't point that one down hey, like little stuff like that pops in my head i don't know if that helps or hurts or whatever but if you're if you're like me you just kind of you think you have these little rules in your head it's like well i had two flame tips going up so i need to have at least two or three going down so that way it all balances out and it kind of goes back to that symmetry thing. I can't, I can't do symmetry at all. But uh, what symmetry to me is to make it sure everything's balanced. You know, I, I, I don't want to have too much of one thing and not enough of the other. If if that makes sense, like like right here, you got a perfect body shape right here, and I feel like that would balance this whole thing out if I just went right there, pulled it up, pulled away. And now look, it's got direction to it, you know? It's just just little rules like that I just kind of follow in my head that I, I just make up for myself as I'm going. And, you know, as you visualize the piece, 
as it's as it's coming out in front of you you know it, it just helps um i kind of like how this swoops up it's kind of following the more of the body of the teardrop down here i was just now thinking i could come up with that way but i, I want to continue with the teardrop body following almost like this back line so right here i can come off of it go out in out and maybe carry this really nice and long and i'll have a final out there and then just gonna make sure that's another thing uh <clears throat> make sure you keep your paint flowing make sure you every now and then i'm, I'm real bad about not uh not mixing my thinner and my paint i'll get I'll get to go on, it'll feel good. And then I wonder, well, darn, my brush is grabbing the surface. Like, what, what am I doing wrong? Well, it's because my paint's getting dry on your brush. What's happening is it's, it's just like a quill or something. You know, you want to keep it flowing. It's actually the paint sticking with the brush hairs. So you don't want this top paint to get dry and then stop flowing. So you got to, that's why you want to palette the whole brush and really keep the whole thing a consistent paint all the way through the bristles right right now i can feel that's a little too thin of paint so i usually just kind of dabble back in grab a little bit more and uh get that feeling like almost like a somebody uh put it perfectly it needs to feel like a like a melted marshmallow like you melted a marshmallow in the microwave for like a minute what that would feel like. I have no idea what that would feel like, but I feel like this would be pretty close. All right, so I got this weird hook here. Can you see how it's not really flowing with anything else? I hope that's still in frame, yeah. So I'm just gonna Make sure my tip's nice and sharp. Sometimes, like I said, when it's flowing down, you can get like a big drip bubble on the end. So with that clean tip, I mean, that flows just a little bit better. I could probably make the body of this line a tad thicker right there. And I'm gonna live with that. Make this just a tad thicker. Sweet. I'll take it. So there's that. Now, tell you what I might do. here too maybe do I got this cool kind of tip here make it look like it's coming out of the tip and this is like a like an orb or something I have no idea it's just all uh like I said man it's all a balancing act keeping this keeping the paint and stuff uh consistent keeping the whole brush quote unquote lubricated if you didn't know, you can store, you're supposed to store your brushes with uh, with some sort of oil. They do make uh, oil for pinstriping brushes and depending on what your brushes are made of and stuff like that. Me, I have no idea. Somebody's probably going to cuss me out, but I put gear oil on mine. There's a whole thing of uh, STP gear oil over there. And I haven't had any problems with them. They haven't split. They haven't done anything weird. I don't know if they're squirrel hair, horse hair, synthetic hair. I don't know. All I know is that that's, that works. And uh, I haven't had no trouble out of that. I'm not saying that's what you should do. Do a little more research than I did. Don't just grab the first thing that you see on the uh, bottom of your oil shelf in the shop, I guess. But that's what works for me. And that's what keeps them all nice and floppy and... Don't make the bristles all hard. I'm going to go super curvy. Real curvy. 
something like that. Come around, make the body super curvy again. In, out, against itself, out, and wham. See, again, it's one of those little rules. I had this tip go down, had this tip come out. Now when you're looking at it, your eye, for some reason, it looks chaotic, but it looks balanced, you know? At least to me. I could be freaking crazy. But to me, that's what it looks like. And to painting, um, painting on this wood, it's a little challenging. I did not get this paint on here as thick as I should have to make this wood less porous. I probably could have cleared it in some sort of hardener. Like right now, I can tell this paint is a little too runny. I'm just going to go back and thicken this, literally thicken up the paint with a little more paint. So that way and cover up some mistakes here. So yeah, I'm still learning how to do like little adapt uh, stuff like that. I, I've never painted the, uh, oh my gosh. I have never painted a skateboard before that wasn't already painted by someone else, if that makes sense. Pinstriped it or whatever. Um, I've always had a challenge with wood anyway, so. All right, bam, 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 and away from that one. Or with it a little bit. I don't care. That's cool with me. That's cool with me, man. By the way, if the camera, I just got, I just, I just got thinking about this. If the camera wasn't on, I'd be talking to nobody. And if nobody's watching this video, I'm still talking to nobody. So that's kind of cool to think about sometimes. But if you're still watching and you're still freaking down here hanging out with me, then I appreciate you. Oh, gosh, that was a little hideous, but that is cool because I can fix it. Let's just pallet that out. And give this one a nice body to it. Let's swoop back in. Cool. Kind of looks like devil horns or something. Right, let's just thicken that up a little bit. Go through and thicken this one up. Cool. If you're like me, you freaking hold your breath until you get done with the line because you don't know how to breathe under pressure. It turns out you need oxygen. <laughs> it turns out you need oxygen to your brain to even think about what you're doing. So remember to breathe. I don't mean like the song or the band or whatever that thing is. Is it, is it, remember to breathe. Is that a band? I think it's a band. I don't know. I feel like I'm ahead right there. So that's, that's cool. All right. Just reviewed that video and saw where you could not see what I'm doing down here with the paint. So that's cool. But anyway, uh, got the board flipped around. I got this space here I'm going to work my way into. Um, I don't know which way the board should really hang. Somebody could probably hang it straight up and down. Um, you know, I'm still kind of working that out as I go. But, you know, I kind of got this lightning bolt effect here, which is cool. That's gonna, I'm going to go in here and try to come up with something that kind of flows flows maybe even something touching a bit on traditional like i said i don't really do traditional but uh you know I mean, i'm feeling some type of cool looking scroll so i got some white mixed up here it's gonna clean out the brush first and i got just a little bit of blue mixing in with it and i'm i'm fine with that there's that old trick of uh blending the tape 
without mixing the two paints too much I've seen some guys get some pretty cool pull some pretty cool lines uh like by blending the paint on the panel with this thin brush it feels like it needs to be really watery but like i said with the pour you know the pores of the wood and stuff wanting to like i don't know it almost looks like a blown out line on a tattoo or something all right so not very good at scroll either by the way but i'm gonna try i'm gonna try a little something where maybe you can still see it on the camera here i might come from outside these and maybe it's something that goes into the panel that would be kind of cool Definitely committed now. All right, that's pretty fun. That's pretty cool. So let's thin this out just a tad. I don't know what they're uh, called. Kind of like little daggers or devil tails or something. I kind of like these little dudes right here. Coming in, starting your line, getting real fat, and then ending it. And letting it go into your scroll. Tough part is finding where that tail ends. There we go. I got this. I couldn't get, I should have started in a little bit different spot, but we'll tail it like that. Now, with the way I do my scroll, I, I'm still learning. I'm not saying that this, I'm still learning how to do my scroll. I'm not saying that this is the correct way. This is whatever, this is just my way here. I like to add like weight, like it kind of looks like the extra feathers coming off of it. Or again, it's one of those kind of balancing acts. And this is where I like to almost, I got these two, I don't know if you can see it. Um, but anyway, down here on my palette, I've got these two uh, on my four by four magazine. I've got these two colors, white and blue. And I'm just gonna kind of palette a little through both. Kind of get a little bit of blue, a little bit of white. And for this stuff, even when it is flowing good, the, I like to have the paint a little bit thicker. If it's watery, again, even on like a nice smooth panel, you can kind of get a blowout, uh, that blowout look. So the thicker the paint and the thicker it can stay together, because to me, I've always lobbed these on like this. So then coming out, like see, I've got these cool uh, curly Q things here, so kind of starting as if it was blowing out of those or something. And sharpen my tip. Um, I have to get a little, get a little imagine, imaginative here. There's that one. You know, you got this nice little flow now to it. It kind of looks cool. 
And you know, uh, to me, this stuff here, it's got like that devil tail look or whatever, but also it kind of looks like some sort of crop, like a like the way uh, the end of a wheat looks, like a wheat tail or something. Uh, kind of has that look. Now, I've got those lines curving this way, you know? It, to me, they're pointing to the right. So now, now I've got something to go off of, right? I've got a direction. I can put something that flows against that, or to me, with my eye, that balances it out. Got this cool light blue now. And that's another thing. With these, I like to do just a little bit different color, depending on your colors or whatever. But I got this blue, I got this blue, and I did all these wispy stuff with white. So now, to blend those two colors together and have a light blue to add this weight, that makes sense in my head. So coming out of this, we're going to follow this. but we're gonna break them away. I just said I had those two and I've made that one flow down, but that's cool. See, even those, it, it, it makes sense. You can still make what you, you can make a mistake make sense. down up maybe even add a fourth one right there so now I've got those pointing that way they're kind of doing their own thing going towards the weight right here now I need to make some that kind of flow in the direction that this tail flows and I don't know how that's going to look all right, so cool. I got this little area here I feel like I can play off of. That's going to cut through these loops. And I feel that's going to give it some foreground. Now I've got something that's also working with the line, but going over top of the line. And it's going to give it a nice three-dimensional effect here. Make sure you're not touching into your previous work. Cool, that's cool. We can, uh, what we're even gonna go further and overlap this and just bring that out like that okay in fact i might just make this do one of these cool like it and now i've got that to play with so i feel like i could do something like this here wake this old blue back up or get a little bit Nice, dude. I like that. In fact, I like it so much, I'm just going to go ahead and do it on the other side. Sweet. It's kind of got this, like, North Star look. See if I can't do a little something like this here. Has some sixties looking stuff. Anything to separate yourself from <clears throat> somebody else's look, you know? All right, so I got this cool curly cue going this way. In fact, what I might do it, to keep it from being too crowded with this, I got this end working with this one. So 
I just want to almost add one of those effects on both sides of this where it kind of has that uh, that plant look to it. So I'm going to dip back a little bit into my lighter whitish blue. Make sure my brush is palleted nice. The paint's going to flow. So that right there is cool with me. I might do just like a wham over that line and it goes maybe out of the panel a little bit. And the rest of this kind of twist over itself a little bit. I used to do a lot of that. Like I used to make them look, sometimes I get a little too busy and but I used to make the line look like it was wrapping around another line. But now I've calmed myself down and made it more of a hidden detail thing where, again, kind of try to separate yourself, trying to do something different. And, you know, I took that from somebody. I'd like Steve Kafka. I mean, he would, his was so intricate. And he, and he, man, he, he did scroll and traditional. It's like a mix of both. So, you know, he was taking his influences and and finding his own way. Without even re reading the name at the bottom, you can see a Steve Kafka and just go, yeah, that, that's his. All right. Moving on to this lightning bolt, I kind of got this blue thing going. I think instead of starting with the white, I'm going to start with the light blue and do white over top of it here in the uh, lightning bolt section. I'm going to move that close to me. Make sure there's nothing on my hands. All right, I immediately kind of got this idea as soon as I saw this here, just now. I got the tip of the lightning bolt to work with. So I'm gonna make everything go towards the tip, kind of make it, you know, it's flowing that direction. So I feel like I could probably start now. Maybe, maybe with the lightning bolt, I'll try just a little bit of traditional here or something similar at least give myself a good solid line to start with. So that would look to something like this. Again, already it pulled a little bit to, uh, to my right standing from here, but that's cool. It's cool if we can make it work, we'll work with it. It's all good. See, I'm already lost because I don't really do traditional. So, but I wanna, I wanna do something a little different in this panel, so. If it's all going that direction, I want to pull it towards that direction. I'm just going to go back for just a second. But then off of that back, I'm just going to... Definitely cool with that. We got this little bit of traditional to work with here. That's a good thing about working with these small brushes like this. I usually kind of start out with a medium, like I said, but you get these small brushes, man. That's when I, I don't know. That's when I start like zero, zeroing in and it's just, detail lines and detail lines and sometimes that can that can ruin ruin me at least you know didn't pull that one quite as far just gonna okay cool all right so from there i want to give myself another color to work with at least but maybe in these corners i'll do a little something uh, I kind of covered this one accent piece up. Um, I still got this long one I can do something with. So, but in these little corners, maybe do do these dot pull. Wow. 
like it's like a, a shiny part on a piece of chrome or something. That looks cool. And man, sometimes it's the simplest thing like that. Like that just, to me, that, that can tie a whole piece together. And that could uh, be the separation between your style and somebody else's style, you know? All right, I'm gonna kind of mix. I want to get a little more white. And yeah, I know, I shouldn't be dipping into the white like this. Y'all can't see it, it's off camera, but I am just taking a whole blue brush and dipping it straight into my white paint. Probably something you'll never see a professional pinstriper at a car show do. But here in this dimly lit shop at close to 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to dip a fully blue brush into a white can of paint with no cares in the world and no one could stop me. Got to be careful. Man, I'm the worst. I will lay my hands straight on wet paint in a heartbeat. So don't, don't be like me. Wham. I dig that. Let's go. Let's give it some more. There. And there. Cool. Uh, in fact, I want to do... I do I, that, that curly cue is almost perfect. I don't want to really mess up too much that's going on with it kind of want to accent what I got going for it and let the you know let that simplification of that be the rest all right if I can I will do this right here and if you want to build abs quickly get yourself a pinstriping kit and get in some awkward positions and try not to mess up any lines you've done that will Forget planking, forget whatever. 30 sets of crunches. You just stand there for a couple seconds, hold your breath, and pull a couple lines. And I swear you'll come out of there with a six pack. Little tail like that. That's cool. Starting there, and then pulling away. Then coming in. Going over. These are so simple but easy to mess up. But man, you do these right right here. And to me, it will make whatever you're doing so three dimensional. See, I'm having to, I don't have to go a little bit thinner. The brush is wanting to, to jump off of the some of the harsher places on the board. But anyway, you do this right and it'll just wake up an entire piece here. But again, you do it wrong and you can really spot the mistake because there's uh, no fixing it. Well, I say that. There's no fixing it, but... Uh, you're going to have to get creative. And I have gotten creative plenty of times to know that you just want to take your time and just watch what you're doing. All right, I'm approaching the end of it and I'm going to get freaking crazy with it. But over sharper.
Cool. And there you go. A twisty, curly Q pinstriped freaking skateboard. Holy. I almost said, <laughs> oh, I, I just realized, I just looked at timestamp. It is 28 minutes on here. Probably won't be 28 minutes for you guys because I'll probably chop it up. But yo, that's a long ass video. Okay, and there you have it. Me adjusting my hat because I'm nervous to be on camera again. Uh, got the board done. It's not done. I still need to clear it. But when you're pinstriping paint or your pinstripes, uh, if you do that before you're clear, man, the only thing I can suggest is to let that thing sit as long as you can because I've always had it... Um, it both with rattle cans back in the day when I was cheap and didn't know how to mix hardener clear and both with hardener clear it uh it just reacts I don't know what it's called you painters and real deal guys you'll know what it is that does it but it almost wants to shrivel and pull and it'll get you some like really really tall peaks in it and it it's not like that cool crackle effect that they're doing on these cool tins and chopper stuff and barn fine relic stuff it's a really like you painted it bad look so uh if you are going to clear definitely let that thing set up and harden because you can see i mean pinstripe paint it will get hard over time but the longer you let it sit the harder it will get so right now like i'm probably going to let this thing sit for at least two to three days before i even think about clearing it um maybe even a little bit longer than that so that's just something to keep in mind when you are pinstriping before you're clear so but anyway there you go there's a video hope y'all enjoyed it thank y'all for watching uh subscribe all that good stuff um again glad to be doing this i'm not sure if this will be my first video back or what but um like i said uh it has been quite a while since my last video I uh, just had a lot going on and stepped away a little bit from artwork as far as documentation of it. I do have some cool ideas uh, as far as catching y'all back up as to what I'm doing. If those, for those that know, um, I do have prints available, so check that out. That link is going to be below. Um, in fact, I'm going to do almost like a sit-down talk review. Those are some paintings I didn't um, document, do time lapses, and... Uh, how they came together so y'all will see that too um and just me talking about that stuff but anyway thank y'all for watching we'll see you next time and check out power and sound revival if you want this board <laughs>